Graphing f of x equals x to the third minus 6x squared plus 9x is fairly simple, provided you know how to take the first and second derivative of f of x. Let's go through the steps to draw this graph. The first step is to identify the critical numbers. The critical numbers come from the first derivative. They are x values where the first derivative is equal to 0. This first derivative is fairly straightforward. I can take the derivative of each term of the original function with the power rule. The derivative of x to the third is 3x squared. The derivative of 6x squared is 12x. And the der derivative of 9x is 9. Setting this first derivative equal to 0 will again give us the critical numbers. The first derivative here is a quadratic. There will be two solutions to this equation. When I set it equal to 0, there will be two critical numbers. I'll solve this equation by factoring. First, I'll take a common factor of 3 out to the front and then factor the quadratic x squared minus 4x minus 3 as a product of binomials. This would factor to x minus 3 times x minus 1. Setting each of those factors equal to 0, I find that the critical numbers are x equals 3 and x equals 1. When sketching this graph, 3 and 1 are possible val uh, x values for points that would be relative maxes or relative mins. And on the graph, I'll, uh, that would be the point where x is 3 and the y coordinate would be f of 3. If I substitute 3 back into the original equation, the original function, 3 to the third power minus 6 times 3 squared plus 9 times 3 is equal to 0. And if I substitute 1 back into the original function, 1 cubed minus 6 times 1 squared plus 9 times 1 is 4. When I go to draw this graph, these two points will possibly rec represent maxes or mins, and we'll find out for sure as we complete the problem. Again, step one is to find the critical numbers. In this case, the critical numbers were 3 and 1. I substituted those x values back into the original function to get two points that are going to be on this graph. And these two points could be extreme values. The next step is to find the possible points of inflection. The possible points of inflection come from the second derivative. They are x values where the second derivative is equal to 0. In this case, the second derivative is, well, taking a look at the first derivative and differentiating each term individually, the derivative of 3x squared is 6x, the derivative of minus 12x is negative 12, and the derivative of 9 is 0. So my second derivative is 6x minus 12. To find the possible points of inflection, I will set this second derivative equal to 0. Here I, um, I have a, a linear equation. 6x equals 12 and x equals 2 is the only possible point of inflection on this graph. Like the critical numbers, I'll, I'll write this as an ordered pair. I'll, I'll write this as a point that's actually that will actually be on the graph that we're about to draw. When you substitute a 2 into the original function, f of 2, 2 to the third power minus 6 times 2 squared plus 9 times 2 is exactly 2. Again, the second step is to find the possible points of inflection. Those come at x values where the second derivative is equal to 0. Here we found 1, x equals 2. And the point on the graph at that x value is 2 comma 2. Now that we know that the critical numbers are 1 and 3 with associated ordered pairs 1, 4, and 3, 0, and the possible points of inflection there's only one x equals 2 with an associated ordered pair 2, 2. The next step is to determine the intervals on which the function is increasing and decreasing. These intervals are determined by the critical numbers. If I make a number line and include the critical numbers on that number line, that breaks apart the number line into three intervals, an interval from negative infinity to 1, an interval from 1 to 3, and an interval from 3 to infinity. What I'm going to do is pick a value in each of those intervals and substitute it into the first derivative. A number between negative infinity and 1, 0, 
if substituted into the first derivative yields 9, or more importantly, positive 9. And because it's positive, that means that the graph is increasing over that entire interval. Because f prime of 0, any number between negative infinity and 1, would give you actually a positive number. The function is increasing between negative infinity and 1. Between 1 and 3, I can choose any number between 1 and 3. I'll choose 2. And if I substitute 2 into the first derivative, I get a value of negative 3. The important thing is that it is negative. And since that is negative, that tells me that in the interval from 1 to 3, the function is decreasing. The function will be going down from x equals 1 to x equals 3 when I draw this graph. Between 3 and infinity, I'll choose a value of 4. And substituting a 4 into the first derivative gives me 9, but it's positive 9, positive 9. That tells me that the function is increasing from 3 to infinity. Any number that I would have picked in the interval from 3 to infinity would have given me a positive number. And again, that tells me that the function is increasing from 3 to infinity. Now that I know where the graph is increasing and decreasing, let's find out some information about the graph's concavity. The intervals of concavity are determined by the points of inflection the possible points of inflection, I should say. And this function had 1, x equals 2. Plotting x equals 2 on a number line breaks that number line apart into two intervals, one interval from negative infinity to 2 and one interval from 2 to infinity. In a similar manner to what I did with the increasing, decreasing intervals, I'm going to choose a number in each interval, or I should say both intervals, but this time, I'll plug that value in to the second derivative. A number between negative infinity and 2, like 0, in the second derivative yields negative 12. Because it is negative, that tells me that this function will be concave down from negative infinity until the time that I get to x equals 2. When I draw this graph, I'll be drawing a curve that is concave down from negative infinity until 2. How about after x equals 2? Well, I'll choose a value between 2 and infinity, put that into the second derivative, and I'm, I'm determining here if this is positive or negative. It turns out that f prime prime of 3, substituting a 3 into the second derivative, gives me a 6, but it's positive 6. That lets you know that the shape of the curve will be concave up from 2 to infinity. Now that I know where the graph is increasing and decreasing and where the graph is concave up and concave down, I have enough information to draw the graph. The first thing I'll do to sketch this graph is plot the associated ordered pairs with the critical numbers and the associated ordered pairs with the possible point of inflection. There was a critical number of 1, and if you substitute a 1 into f of x, you get a 4 for the y-coordinate. The second critical number was 3. Substituting a 3 into f of x yields a 0. The ordered pair that's associated with the critical number of 3 is 3, 0. There was one possible point of inflection, x equals 2. And substituting a 2 into the original function gives you a value of 2, 2. Now, I know that this function is increasing from negative infinity until x equals 1. Additionally, I know that the graph is concave down the whole way from negative infinity until 2. This function will be increasing until I get to x equals 1, and it will be increasing over the entire interval from negative infinity until 1. And then the graph will be decreasing the whole way from 1 to 3. But it will change concavity at x equals 2. I'm going to begin by drawing this curve increasing from negative infinity until x equals 1 and concave down. Now it will look something like this. 
This is a curve that's increasing and it's concave down. It's going to get to a relative maximum value at 1, 4, and then between 1 and 3, the graph will be decreasing. The graph will be decreasing between 1 and 3. On its way from 1 to 3, the graph will be decreasing, and that makes sense based on where these points are. To get, the only way to get from 1, 4 to 3, 0 is to decrease, so that makes sense. As far as the concavity goes, I'm going to draw a curve that's concave down until I get to x equals 2 because the graph is concave down from negative infinity to 2, but then it's concave up from 2 to infinity. So it will change concavity at the point 2, 2. I'll draw a curve that is decreasing and concave down until I get to 2, 2. But then at 2, 2, while still decreasing, this curve is going to change to being concave up. The graph will change to being concave up. Then, from 3 to infinity, the graph is going to remain concave up, but at, from 3 to infinity, it will now increase. So that makes 3, 0 a relative min, and the graph will increase from 3 to infinity in this way. The curve showed on the screen is the graph of the original function f of x equals x to the third minus 6x squared plus 9x knowing the critical numbers and their associated ordered pairs, 1, 4, 3, 0, and the possible point of inflection, which turned out to be actually a point of inflection because the graph changed concavity at that point, is enough information to sketch a very good approximation of the graph of this curve.